check my
a steak, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that works. That works. Yeah, that's that's why I always heard the name so much. <laughs> Well, anyhow, it's good to have you back. We love her. We love her name. Yeah. Good to see you, Wayne. We missed you. Um, I don't really have any announcements. Uh, I think sooner or later, uh, now that we're through the roof, uh, we probably should do another uh, ad council council meeting just to touch base and and uh, see what our game plan is from here. Um, I will be going next Sunday, uh, but the following Sunday I'll be back and maybe we can talk about a Saturday that we can meet or something um, just to know where we're going next um, or where the world might take us. Um, uh, one thing I did want to mention, um, I'm trying to find out the best way to keep to communicate with all of you. Um, do most who here has an email address that they check? Do you have an email? I don't know who does. Um, because what's happening is that uh, even though we have a group text, not everybody's on the group text, and not everybody gets up to date, um, and we have things that are posted in the um, in the fellowship room that not everybody sees because they're not coming for a while. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to try to keep everybody informed uh, instead of instead of doing four different types of communication. <laughs> if we can narrow it down to a couple, that would be that would be great. Maybe that's something we could talk about at the council meeting. So, uh, but that's all I have. That's just something to think about. Um, uh, as, as we communicate and we have more things happening in the summer. So, uh, do you have, does anybody else have any announcements? No? Uh, then we uh, are moving into our call to worship. The one who called Samuel from the darkness continues to say, Let light shine out of the darkness. The light of Christ shines all around us. The one who searches us and knows us hems, hems us in behind and before. We are clearly and humbly remain. Let us worship God who strives our justice at every turn. Amen. I wish you may have voices in the opening prayer. Merciful Lord, when the light beats yourselves, you reach out to us and restore us to health and hope and wholeness. Surprise us once more, O oh God, with your never failing grace in light of your love. Amen. Do as we say to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body.
for our joys and concerns. Um, do we have any any joys this morning? Okay. stuff going on in the past few weeks, but, um, but do you, I want you to know that no matter what happens going forward, the roof was a big deal. I hope that you all realize that that was a huge step in, in, in the faith that you have in yourselves that that this building will be here and we'll figure out a way to make it work and we're going to trust God in the process. Um, do we have a lot of other things to take care of? Yes, but I can guarantee you unless the Methodist Church started from 1970 on, there are many churches in this condition and it's just trying to figure out how to make it work with what we have and being wise about it. And it, it, it really is to me, I, I drove by on Friday because I wanted to, Marty and Kent were coming um, yesterday morning and I wanted to make sure there was no obstacles that they, you know, they could come through the door or whatever. And, uh, and to see it done uh, was, was just, an answer to prayer, I think. That uh, that they said it would take three days, and and uh, Dar and I were talking. Even though that we had to put, uh, buy more plywood, and it was a little bit more expensive than what we what we thought it was going to be, it could have been a lot worse. So we need to uh, to see God in in the project that was accomplished. And that's what we have to. So when we say we got the roof done, it should be we got the roof done and we're pressing forward, right? Right. So this is the first step of us being able to be focused on, on yeah, we want to have the building that's fixed up, but we're doing this because we want to be in the community. So one step down, many more to go, mm -hmm. one step at a time. And as long as we keep focused on sharing God and his love, it's actually what the sermon's about. It's just being open to being a pot and letting the potter do his magic with us. So, um, a mini sermon there. Do uh, any any concerns that we want to lift up? My note taker is not here, <laughs> so I'll, uh, I can always just vary in general. Uh, Wayne. Amen. Amen. And she is, she is loved 
And I don't think any of us has stopped praying for her. So please reassure her that, that we are wrapping her up, okay? to thank you for everything that you, you do for us, everything that we had happened to us last week. Good or bad, we know that you're with us through those. We ask that you just uh, continue to be with this church family. Help us stay focused on you and take one step at a time and understand that you are, you are with us and you and the Holy Spirit will just will help us be able to uh, understand what our mission is. Or I should say, how our mission will be accomplished. Uh, we ask you to be with Gary. We ask you to be with Rose. We thank you for seeing faces that we haven't seen for a while. Blessings on a Sunday morning when somebody walks in that hasn't been here and we get to catch up and we just we thank you for those, those blessings that you give us. We thank you for letting the road finish with uh, uh, minimal um, additional costs and we thank you for letting the workers be able to get it done without any accidents or injuries. Lord, we ask you to be with this community. We just ask you to show, help us show your love in this community. Uh, and Lord, we thank you so much for the talents that you blessed Ava with. Uh, we know that she is so talented and we thank you for, for that. Lord, we appreciate your, your grace that you give to us all the time, each day. The fact that we we're like humans with erasers that we can just, we can stumble and fall, but those, those falls are erased by your grace. We just thank you for all our blessings. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Let us join together in singing hymn 382.
our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Psalms, verses 1 through 6 and 13 through 18. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind me before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward heart. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you, when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance, and your books were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them yet, when none of them yet had existed. This is the word of God for the people of God. So, what is the first thing that you do when, uh, when you're looking for a new job? complain about their job and they don't like this and they don't like that and my response to them is well what are you doing to change that if you don't like it that much then why not test the waters see that takes that takes courage that takes work and that's a lot harder than just complaining about your job you 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 have to actually try to, to make your situation better if it's making you that unhappy. So you, you can't just snap your fingers and have a new job. You have to do something in order for that to happen. So we're, we're talking a little bit about how God formed us today. You can hear in the song about how he knew, knew us in the womb about how we already started making us. And the fact that, that that concept alone can really make people, their, their mind not be able to grasp it, the fact that God knew you in the womb. Because that, that has, that causes too many questions when those people that want to question uh, your faith in God, when you say, well, he knew me in the womb, it's, it's difficult for them to grasp because they don't have the connection with God that we do and that we know that he's, he created us, each and every one of us. His, in his way, he, he molded us into who we are and our experiences. Um, I think I shared with you all that I had my call to ministry when I was about 16 or 17. And I went away to a Christian college and had <clears throat> the experience was good, but I learned a lot about people. And, uh, you know, there's a couple things that I remember about how, how we were sitting in a prayer circle holding hands, and, and we were praying about 
something that was going on. And uh, I will tell you, the people at that college knew how to pray because there were sometimes you went into a prayer meeting, and by the time you left, you were hungry, and it, it was it was long. So you're you're holding hands, you're in a circle, and you're praying. And then as soon as we get done, somebody says, well, did you hear about so-and-so and what they did? And they started talking about this person and, and, and judging them. I don't even remember what they did. But they started judging them for what they did. And I kind of thought, is this what Christianity is all about? The second thing I remember is you remember the last temptation of Christ with William DeVoe it was very controversial and they were going to go across the street to the movie theater and picket it and I remember asking them have you seen the movie and they were all like no and I said well how do you know what you're picketing if you haven't even sat through the movie at least be knowledgeable about what you're picketing and I saw the judgment through, through those couple of things and I thought there's no way that I want to do this for a living because I can't be in a place where everything that everybody does is looked at as a microscope and yet you're supposed to be followers of Christ so I as you all know I walked away from church for a long time only to get my call to ministry later in life So things happen that help mold who you are. And those experiences made me who I was. Because one of the things that I can tell you raises my blood pressure the most is when I see somebody in a church, whether I was in ministry at the time or not, but when I see somebody in church be judgmental before they even know the person. Before I pray, I want to I want to tell you this one story. So our youth group, um, when I was youth director, we were sitting around the table and we were talking about how we could invite people. And a girl's name came up who was known to be, we'll just say, a free spirit. And the, the people. The kids didn't say much, but what got me was the parents said, we can't have her come. Do you know the things that she does? And I remember thinking for a minute and then saying, isn't that why we're here? Is to have a positive influence on people? So why are we debating about whether or not we should invite this person? Because they need a good influence. They need to be in a group of good people. See, we get caught up with what the person is doing or what they are, are being said to have done. And we forget that we're to play. And we need to let God make whatever he wants to in that situation. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we, we come to you and we ask you to continue to be with us in, in this moment. Uh, let your spirit be with us. Uh, we ask that you uh, are with us as we hear the scripture and as we continue the service. Uh, and Lord, I ask that my words So I wanted to read a couple of scriptures. The first one is uh, 2 Corinthians. Uh, and this is in chapter 4. But we have this treasure in clay pots, so that the awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come for up from us. We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we aren't crushed. 
We are confused, but we aren't depressed. We are harassed, but we, are, we aren't abandoned. We are knocked down, but we aren't knocked out. We always carry Jesus' death around in our bodies so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies. We who are alive are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake, that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies that are dying. So death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. So we, we, have, we have Jesus growing in our hearts, in our bodies, and the fact that he is continually making us into who we are. And sometimes when the pot that is being made isn't what it should be, you have to start over again. And I know in my life that's happened many times where you've got to start fresh because you know that the life that you, you have going on right now is not the life that you should have. So you find that life in Jesus and, and his love and his grace. The second scripture is in 1 Samuel, which is one of my uh, favorite ones just because um, of how many times that Jesus, that God calls, and we think, I didn't hear that, or I'm just hearing things, or maybe that was somebody in the street. Now the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under Eli. The Lord's word was rare at the time, and visions weren't widely known. One day Eli, whose eyes had grown so weak that he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp had gone, hadn't gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple where God's chest was. The Lord called Samuel. I am here, he said. Samuel hurried to Eli and said, I'm here. You called me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go lie down. So he did. Again, the Lord called Samuel. So Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, I am here. You called me? I didn't call my son, Eli replied, go and lie down. Now Samuel didn't yet know the Lord, and the Lord's word hadn't been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. He got up, went to Eli, and said, I'm here. You called me? Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down where he had been. Then the Lord came and stood there, calling just before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel said, Speak, your servant is listening. So how many times have we heard God's call and we ignored it, or we might have said that that was too much work. I think that these days, speaking just for the Methodist Church, I think we are finally realizing that God's been telling us for the longest time to go outside the doors, to be missional, and we kept putting it off and putting it off because that takes time, that takes effort. It doesn't always take money because you can get creative. But a lot of times we have these, these things that, are, that are, are, are being called in our hearts and our churches and we go, we don't really want to do that because that's not what we want. Now the sermon title is, Are You Clay or Are You Concrete? Are we open enough to say, God, take us, use us, mold us into whatever you want? Or are we hard-headed like concrete and say, as long as we have what we have, we're happy. We 
have to be able to let God and trust God. That's why I say the roof is a bigger deal than what you think it might be. Because for the first time, from what I heard, I'm still new here, but from what I heard that we took a leap of faith by spending money to make an improvement. That's a huge step for you all. At least from what I've heard. So you are, you are, are to that point where you're going, Lord, make us what you want. Mold us into the church that you want us to be. And let us be open to it. Now, I get these weird ideas in my head. I hear about clay. And for some reason, my, my mind went to, to Plato. Everybody remember Plato? Did you guys have any rules when you played with Plato? Don't eat it. Well, don't eat it, yeah, for sure. Keep it on the table. Sure. What was that? Keep it on the table. Keep it on the table. Yeah, um, I liked Play-Doh until our daughter was born, and people bought her Play-Doh. And then I realized what the big deal was, because when you get this in carpet, it doesn't want to come out. Or if you get it on the furniture, it doesn't want to come out. But here's my thought. Wouldn't it be amazing if our church acted like Plato? You might say, well, I've lost you. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. But what if we acted like we were Plato and we went out in the community and we made such a mess that bits and pieces of us were all through the community. Hard to clean up because it's there. We left it. So what if we went out to the community so much that places knew who we were and places said, Oh yeah, that's Whitey United Methodist Church. And we took this Play-Doh and we got dirty with it and we got our hands in the mud and we just we just left our calling card everywhere. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't it be great to have the city of Whitey know us by name? Not because of who we are or the whole old or the, the beautiful building, but because of what we've done in the community. I know them, they helped here. I know them, they did this. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing? But before we we're able to do that, we have to allow us ourselves to be that play let God mold us into what we want or what he wants. And we have to be willing to let go. Before we go to communion, I wanted, uh, wanted to share um, one more story with you. So last night was our first and third service on Saturdays. And we talked about Jesus praying in the garden. And about how he prayed that he wanted what was going to happen to his cup to pass. But he also wanted God's will to be done. Now, what kind of freedom are you giving the artist when you say, Lord, here are my prayers. I want you to answer them however you want. Sometimes it's what we want to hear, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's amazing, a miracle, an answer to prayer, sometimes it's not yet. But we have to be that, that clay on the, on the table, ready to be molded. And he'll shape us the way he wants us. And we can trust.
trusted because of the fact that he is shaping us in love. You think about a love that a parent has for a child. If God knew you from your womb, or from your mother's womb, do you think he would ever let us out of his touch, out of his sight? If he cared that much to start telling us and making us who we were in the womb, Would he leave us now? So we need to trust that he's making us who he wants us to be. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. We won't lie about that. So as we go into communion, remember that each time that we have communion, it is, a, it is a time for us to reflect on what Jesus did for us, the love and the grace that he has for us. And just the overall, here I am, here's my life. Use me the way you want me to be used. And trust me. nobody else on this earth that you can trust more. So if you would open your hymnals to uh, page 9. Christ has come again. For I fully 
Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And so Christ comes in final victory and in peace that is heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is the sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is the sharing in the blood of Christ. Table set and all are welcome. Ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
of assurance this morning, though we are but, yet, but vessels of clay, the extraordinary power of God shines light in through our darkness. <coughs> though our span of years is short, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God blesses us with the mercies beyond, with beyond measure. You would stand as you're able and join in singing hymn 374. you to, to hear it, feel it, and then live it. 